This is the Red Wolf, designed and produced by the master himself, Vic Lin, at Work Tough Gear. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this very capable knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I do want to thank Vic for sending out the Red Wolf so that I could share it with you. So the backstory is, is I've been looking at this knife a long time. It just speaks to me. I don't know if knives speak to you or not, but this one said, you have to try me. And I'm glad so glad that Vic sent it to me for doing that all right so what we'll do is I'll bring the camera in closer I'll show you the knife in some detail and of course we'll do a few demonstrations with it and then I'll give you my thoughts on it all right just before we focus in on the knife itself as always let's take a look at the sheath and I know I say this but it's true Vic knows how to do kydex simple design for sure but attention to detail like really no one else everything is just spot on drain hole as you would expect multiple attachment points, belt loop, by the way, the belt itself is, or belt loop itself is Velcro and don't snap, which is nice to be able to get it on and off of your belt sometimes without having to take your belt off, I guess. Now, how does the knife fit? Listen, you know, that, you know, it's not coming out, all right? So enough said about the sheath, let's bring the knife back in. Now, I'm going to be giving you the specifications for this. Of course, everything is going to be listed in the video description below. Let me get my cheat sheet. And let's start. All right, overall length of this knife is 10.15 inches. That'd be from the tip of the uh, knife to the pommel itself. Blade comes in at an exact five inches. Blade thickness is 0.177 or 4.5 millimeters. So it's a fairly thick stock blade. Blade height, that would be from edge to spine, 34.5 millimeters. It is a full convex grind. We're gonna talk about that a fair amount. There is a slight drop point to the blade. We'll talk about that as well. Blade steel, this is Bowler N690 cryo dipped stainless steel hardened to between 58 and 60 on the Rockwell scale. Now, it is a 3D machined G10. Let me just give you a few close-ups and we'll talk about the design. Let's start with the handle, okay? So this is Vic's standard handle. What I mean by standard is most of Vic's designs, his specific designs, are this or a slight variation on it. And it is just anatomically, I don't know, as close to perfect as you can get. Can you see palm swells? just gentle nothing outrageous a little bit of a finger choil up here there is it's not thumb scallops well i guess you can call it more of a ramp right here than anything else hidden lanyard hole the g10 is slightly textured not aggressively textured but it's you can see and feel that it's there the green liners inside i think i may have already mentioned that and allen ski allen wrench or allen bolts i guess that would be the same little bit of jumping just a nod to jumping functional well it is if you need it but really you don't need it on this knife because of the shape now i talked about this being a saber not saber grind convex full convex grind so it starts off very much like a full flat grind or not quite you can see there's a little bit of flat area out here but that just kind of disappears towards the tip We'll just call it the full flat grind, but it's not a full flat grind in the sense that it has a secondary bevel. It's a full convex, meaning it comes right down to a zero grind edge, but it does so in a gentle curve, not a sudden uh, change of angle like a Scandi grind or zero grind knife does. This is zero ground, but it has a just a rounding towards the tip, if that's the best way to say it. And wait until you see the performance based on that. Still has plenty of strength at the tip, as you can see. You're not going to damage this by prying it or doing any hard work with it. But the tip is still fine enough, and the rise or the, or the belly is still gentle enough that you can do quite a bit of fine carving with it. Now, make no mistake, this is not a carving knife. This is a bushcraft moving into survival knife that's where i want to put this in. if you have to classify this i would say probably small survival or large bushcraft and the reason i can do that is anything in the five inch length is probably suited to most survival tasks it's starting to get a little long for doing bushcraft tasks such as fine carving with but as you'll see this will do those tasks just fine all right so that is the overall design of the knife a few more looks See the Work Tough Gear logo there, and yeah, a little piece of orange paracord, of course. Okay, let's put it to a few tests. All right, I've got about a, looks like 13, 14 inch piece of what may be maple. 
hard to tell when the bark is still kind of young like this. Uh, two and a half inches on that end, two inches on that end, heavy and full of knots. So that'll be the fun part. Just the same, this convex edge on this red wolf should do a good job of splitting. So let's have a look. All right, no problems there. No problems whatsoever. So what I'll do now is I'll split down the rest of this wood so I can get some lengths for making some feather sticks with. All right, we're gonna make a tent peg and I decided to make this one out of a stick itself rather than one of the splits. So I'm working with something that is probably just about an inch in diameter, 12 inches in length. I'll start by doing, actually, we're gonna do it just a little bit different. I was going to work it by hand, but I am gonna baton in the notch. I don't think my anvil's big enough for doing this, but we'll see if we can't accomplish it. A little different this time. Make the X pattern type of a beaked spot for a guy rope to grab onto. That was easy, of course. And now we'll just start to carve it out. I don't make these very often because, well, they work, they're better on pot cranes and the like, but they're not really necessary for a tent peg most of the time. But every once in a while it's good to practice your skill on these. Undercut the beak a little bit. So it's not an L7 per se, it is a cross cut or beak cut. But I don't want to go down too much deeper I'm into, I'll get into the hardwood. All right, that's not a bad hook for a tent peg. Your guide rope's not going to come off of that. Let's put a point on the other end of this. All right, so we're going to put a point on our tent peg, and I'm, yeah, we'll be using the reverse grip and using the chest lever. And the whole point of doing it this way, I mean, this has got enough weight. I could have chopped it in, quite honestly, but I want to see how comfortable it is in reverse grip to use. So let's do that. What well, slice is nice, like I was expecting to. I don't think it needs to be any pointier than that. All right, so my thoughts on this, if I use the ramps and put my thumbs here, then it's not as comfortable as I'd like it to be because the beak, there's a little bit of a point on it here and it's digging into the palm. However, if I just grab the whole knife without putting my thumb or put my thumb higher on the blade, then it is much more comfortable. I have more control and more comfort for using it. That's probably the better way to hold this nice and reverse grip because of course it's a longer blade. You're not going to lose a lot of blade length with something that's five inches in length. So overall impression works well in reverse grip for putting the point on a tent peg. All right, let's move on to feather sticks. So I've picked up two of the splits off of that piece of maple, trying to decide which might be the better choice for giving me some success. I think I'll go with this one. Grain is not especially straight, and the wood is kind of splitting itself out. But those sound like excuses, don't they? Let's just take a little bit off, and we'll start from here. All right. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. This is where that convex comes into its own, is in this type of carving. It has all the finesse of a zero ground Scandinavian knife, but strength, so much more strength than does a zero ground edge because of the way the convex is shaped. A couple big ones here, but that's the wood. Let's see if I can get some little tiny, little tiny little kind of curls like that. Can you see those little curls there? That's straightened it out. Let's see if I can make a, 
the fine, fine edge of this. Despite it being a five inch blade, I can get right up on the edge and I can get all kinds of control. And this is why, and probably the only reason I would say why I would classify this as a bushcraft knife as well as a survival knife is because what it can do right here. Now, I'm just kind of messing around a little bit, but I'm not going to make a full feather stick, obviously. But it wouldn't take long to do that, even with this hard rock maple. Oh, that's fun. That really is. But enough of that. Okay. Does it feather? Like a champ. And that's only, well, not only. I mean, it is almost a full flat grind, but that convex secondary or full convex, full convex blade. That's the best way to describe it, because that's, of course, what it is. Feathers, excellent. All right. But does it scrape? All right. First type of scraping I like to do for these demonstrations is of the wood itself. Spine. Oh, yeah. This is going to be fun. Or easy, I should say. Little piece of... Uh, split of wood here that I have just for collecting everything. Lots of little scrapings. They were flying everywhere. Now it's really windy out here today. I'm just going to collect those to the side and I'll be igniting them along with the fat wood in a moment. Something that's worth doing some scraping on. How about right here? Yeah, that's that's a scraper. Now I'm trying to block the wind so I don't have burning fat wood going everywhere. Okay. That should work. Clean spot on the on the knife. Oh yeah. That's better. And those little wood pieces. Yes, it scrapes like a champ, like I expected it to. All right, let's wrap this video up. A few closing comments for the Red Wolf from Work Tough Gear, designed by the owner of Work Tough Gear, Vic Lynn himself. So Vic does have a number of designs on the website. They're his right from the scratch. They're not ones that have been commissioned by him or by other uh, knife designers. And this is one of them. And this really stands out as an all round performer. I call it a survival knife, but maybe it's better called a camp knife. It has, well, it's just, looks good, right? But it functions very much like a camp knife, survival knife, and bushcraft knife. Now, why do I say that? Um, five inches is usually the length where you start to call something a survival knife because it can baton and do a lot more heavier work. And the fact that it has a four and a half millimeter spine means it's got plenty of strength to it. But that high flat grind, which of course is fully convexed, makes it a great slicer. So as a camp knife, it's going to do all your food preparation as well as other tasks that require a very slicing knife. And um, as a bushcraft knife, you wouldn't think it, but this one does. It not only splits wood well, as you saw, even through that hard rock maple, but it also carves just as well. And that's due to the fact that it has a drop point a fairly gentle rise to meet it. It's not center point, so it's not going to drill as well as something that is truly spear point, but I've never seen a problem with that. I don't do that much drilling that it would make that much of a difference to me, but you know, if you drill, I don't think you'll be disappointed with using this. Super sharp spine, exactly what you want on a survival knife. Maybe not on a bushcraft knife, but most people are come to expect it now. You've got it here. It's going to come as sharp as you can ever imagine it. Super comfortable anatomic grip. My hand fully fits in there at full control. The only thing I would say about the grip, and it sounds like a bit of a negative, but it's just something to be aware of, is in reverse grip. If you want to put your thumb on the ramp, the ramp is there for doing that, at least with my size hand, it's going to dig into the palm right here. The answer for me was just move forward and put my thumb up on the blade. And then again, I had the control I need and the comfort that I was looking for in this knife. What a great all-rounder. A little bit heavy, but then again, what did you expect for something that is as much a survival knife as it is a bushcraft knife as it is a camp knife? Okay, 
Can't say enough good things about this. And just to top it off, a good quality, not a super steel, but a good quality stainless steel Bowler N690. Yeah, I've come to really appreciate that on knives like this one. Okay, everything I've shown you, all the specifications I've mentioned will be in the video description. You're welcome to leave any comments or any questions in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less followed because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.